that probably took me longer to do than the rest of the, <laughs> than the, rest of the presentation put it together. I think there is a new dog coming. How many of you have seen this before, this analysis? Wow, not very many. Okay, I will go through this quickly then. How are people for time? Are we, where do we advertise it to? Oh, it's Friday, isn't it? We'll go to the pub afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Well, is that a good idea? So, yeah. <laughs> this is the population graph of the United Kingdom. Number of people by gender, about those sides, age, and so on. Yeah. Obviously, there's less few people because they have a habit of less older people because they have a habit of dying. There's this wonderful peak in 1946, nine months after the day a million men came home all at once. Yeah, the biggest party of all time. There were a lot of babies nine months after that. Not surprising. I always make a joke at this point about the Canadians because they show the same spike, exactly the same, but it's two years later. Yeah, which means it was either a very slow boat, yeah, or as I suspect, Canadians are notoriously slow to warm up at a party. Okay, show us the second one. You have the baby boomers, yeah, the Generation X, or many of us, uh, Generation Y, starting to come through. If you took Maslow analysis to try and explain why old people, boomers, and the Generation X behave differently, it comes out very, very simple, very, very clean. Yeah, why have they got this attitude? Why do old people? They were born poor, they were always going to be poor, their job was to survive and pop out a few kids. Yeah? They made decisions based on sustenance needs. Yeah? Um, was that? I'll, I'll go through this in a different order than I normally do. Older people, sustenance driven, bluntly, the overwhelming feeling in the population was I'm eating less because it costs less, quite aptly illustrated by my granddad who lived up in the South Highlands of Scotland and used to decide whether I had a boiled egg or a sliced ham and his tea, depending on which was cheapest that day. And he did that all his life. He also came out with some absolute wonders of the sustenance driven generation, such as my advice when I was leaving home, Al, remember this. Kisses fade, but cooking lasts. <laughs> wouldn't it? If we still believed that, gyms wouldn't exist, would they? We wouldn't have to feel guilty about oh, it. He also had one which I, I accidentally brought the house down there. I was doing a talk in Holland a couple of weeks ago. And another bit of advice he gave to me was, abroad, abroad. Oh, I went there once, didn't like it, I'm never going again. <laughs> and of course, this is in Holland, I'm doing this. And I said, of course, when you're thrown out over Arnhem and everybody's shooting at you, you don't have a very good experience and you don't come back. <laughs> at which point, all oh, hell broke loose as the Dutch start shouting, the Germans and the French got stuck in. <laughs> Give up on this. <laughs> system is based around thrift, yet it's based around basic human needs. They know about hunger, they know about shelter, but they really, frankly, don't care in global macroeconomics or microcredit. Uh, so they give to the needs, they give to this child is starving, help it. Yeah? 